Hello there, so here we are on the 2nd of June 2019, summer is here, beautiful temperature, it's about 27 degrees C right now, which is I think about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, so absolutely lovely, loads of things going on here, nice breeze as well, nice cooling breeze blowing through the old shorts or whatever, and it's just absolutely lovely to work in, we're doing some tidying here, and I thought I would take you around with me to do the usual Sunday afternoon tour here at Home Gardens, so let's go, and we will start in here. Okay, let's have a look at the peaches, shall we, peeps? Look at that, look, look at the size of them, baby. They're starting to come on. If I put my finger there, look, nice, going to be a little bit of peachiness going on here. Not as much of a crop as last year, but, uh, you know, we all deserve a rest, don't we? And so does the peach tree. So there we go. Lovely bit of peachiness happening there, and we love peachy things. Right, now, so down here, what have we got? We have got, what have we got? That's it, yard-long beans. Now, um, oh. These are commonly grown, so like in Southeast Asia and places like that. Very nice tasting bean, a yard long, hence that's the name. The other name is snake beans. Filipino people call them sea towel. You know, different languages have different names. But, um, you know, as a substitute, you can use, you know, sort of climbing French beans. They're kind of similar in taste. But, uh, you know, a nice bit of a novelty growing them here. I have grown them before, and I want to grow them again and hopefully improve on the success I had a few years ago. So that's them. Um, I'm quite happy, actually, with how they're coming on. Now, the different varieties of tomatoes. Now, I've got some sort of Eastern European tomatoes here. I've got some, you know, sort of classic English ones, Moneymaker as well. So I'm quite happy, you know, in those regards how the plants are coming on. If I put the old uh, mobile phone down here, look, you can see that the plants are looking quite nice indeed. So I'm very happy with that. Um, I use these sort of old milk bottles. Um, sometimes people give me these, you know, and what I do is I chop them and um, like that, and I write on them, you know, for the names so I know what names they are, and then I stick the old tag there, because for me it's important to know what I'm growing. So yeah, looking quite good actually all over here. The strawberries as well, varieties Cambridge favourites. They're in a very heavy container. Well, the containers aren't heavy. The growing medium in the containers is heavy because um, I've got a really good quality growing sort of medium in there as well. So holding the moisture and a bit of, uh, you know, moisture and nutrients together will hopefully create me some absolutely lovely taste and strawberries me in the future so what i've got here is i've got them in the polytunnel mainly to keep the birds off to be honest that's why i'm i'm um, 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 doing it right spoke a lot about the old grapevine yesterday so i won't go too much into that if you want to hear a bit about grapes and my approach to uh my approach to grape growing, or one of my many approaches to grape growing, uh, check out the video yesterday should you be interested. But uh, yeah, so it's all looking good. Nice bit of grapiness going on. You know, going to be some beautiful grapes there So Now, um, the uh, blood orange. Um, right, so you can see, look, I've now formed some fruities. Little fruitlets there, so I'm hoping to be able to get some absolutely lovely blood orange fruitiness from the blood orange tree. So I'm, oh, oh, all the excitement is, oh, it's too much to bear. Now down here, what have we got? So this here is a coffee plant. Um, I had this inside, but I brought it out now because it's, um, you know, nice and uh, warm, but I keep thinking about what, to, you know, I'm going to have to repot it, you know, soon, but of course it has to go in inside because it's a tender plant, but it has put out a bit of growth since it's been under my sort of custody, if you will, but uh, very happy, you know, how it's coming on, and I love it, I really do, and the tea plant, now the tea plant, tea is the same family as camellia, but yeah, so, but don't go out, don't go drinking camellia leaves, you know, you're not supposed to do that, but this is tea, as in, you know, nice cup of English tea, old boy, you know, I'm sure that many of you out there enjoy a nice cup of English tea, holding it by the old, uh, what's it, you know, oh yes, well, beautiful, so yeah, that's um, what, you know, that's what I'm hopefully going to be doing with this tea, it's grown from there to there since I've had it, I've got it out from the corner there, where there's a slug currently, there but um yes so this is what i've got you know tea and coffee plants here but uh, they're going to take a long long time before they 
But you've been a long, long time coming. Been a long, long time gone. But it means to be so long. Crosby, Stills and Nash, remember that? Okay, so the container growing area of complete brilliance. That's the name of this area, or at least the name that I've called it. And I've got various varieties of squash, um, tomatoes, um, runner beans growing in containers here. So uh, these are money maker, by the way. Uh, so it's this. Yes, all three of these are money maker. And uh, this is Benning's Green Tint Squash. Um, broad runner, blah, 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 runner beans growing up. Um, these sort of uh, canes that I've got from sort of gardening jobs here, you know, like to reuse them and more runner beans here. And what's this? A squash of um, oh, Volskaya Blue, that's it. And here, what have we got here? Uh, Benning's Green Tint. And here we've got. Do, 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 Victor winter squash. So I've got a variety of squashes here. So I'm going to be very happy about uh, hopefully good crops of those. Going to have to make sure I feed these because well, or maybe I won't. I'll talk about that another time. I'm not yet decided. No, that's that's for something else. Now here we've got the yuzu. You may remember I purchased this and I did a video the other night when it arrived, and it's actually greened up a lot since it's been in this pot here. So I'm using the same sort of policy really of pot growing as I am with the. Um, what you call it, uh, blood orange there. So container growing. Um, allegedly this is hardy down to um, oh, minus 10 degrees C. But um, you know, certainly at least in, it, in its young life, it's going to be going in the in the polytunnel here in the winter period. They do suggest winter protection. So uh, yeah, I'll give you a bit of a, oh, goodness gracious, bit of a closer, oh, look, lovely, isn't it? Lovely. And it's actually got some blossom on it. There you go, look, see? Look at that, look at that, look. So I might even be getting some yuzus. There, look. It's gonna come out, so I might even be getting some yuzus soon. So it'd be great if I get yuzus that quick after just purchasing the tree. Citrus, yunos, junos, yuzu, 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 yuzu. So it's, one can say it's internationally called a yuzu. Would one agree with that? I would. Cool. It is truly cool. Right, now, so um, I've got the, I've put the, um, I've put the, um, the, um, what's it? The persimmon is outside. Okay, now it can, they need winter protection apparently whilst they're young. I do know, you've probably seen the video, I've uploaded it, that tree several times now, one of these growing outside. But um, it's a mature tree and it survived the beast of the east, blah de blah. But um, they recommend in winter protection. So it's going to go out here for this summer. Um, safe to say no more frosts, hopefully. So it's going to stay out here. The person one otherwise known as Sharon fruit. And the same as the pomegranate. It's going to stay here as well. And they're all in these tubs of lots of nutrients. And we've got runner beans growing in between. And we may even have a little bit of flour to come soon on some container grown runner beans right should be getting some good gooseberry good gooseberry good 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 gooseberry crop this year you see that look carrying a lovely fruity bit of gooseberryness there so I'm quite happy with you know considering uh, this you know the story if you followed um, my channel for a while they would benefit from a bit of a water in order to sort of swell the berries a little bit but lovely you know nice crop there very happy, particularly happy this one's managed to come through because I don't think that had much of a root left on it. But um, yeah, so just going to leave these in there. They're very close together, but the reasoning for this was because I wasn't sure. I just had nowhere else to put them and I wanted to ensure that I had a good crop of gooseberries. Currants as well. I'm not carrying a crop as yet, but I'm not surprised to be honest. Oh, there we are. We are here, look. There we go. There we go. Raspberries! 
and the old vegetable patch is coming on lovely. I'm sorry if it's the wind is up against the screen here or whatever. I'm trying to put my hands around it. But you know, the beetroot, remember that that I grew in cells? That's come on very well. My broad beans are doing beautifully. Here you go, look. I've even got a broad bean on there. Now, I still haven't mended that post. I'll do it before. You know, my aim is to do it within the next 25 years, so I will get round to it eventually. It's just digging out the concrete and all that, you know, whilst working and full time and looking after the garden and oh, you got you peeps know what it's all about. Hard work sometimes. Now another little um, what do you call it there? Uh, broad bean. So yeah, we're looking good. We really are. I put some later, you know, later you know, different ones of beetroot in and the beets gorgeous I've set some Swiss chard today actually a char more of a Swiss chard which is a member of the beet family and I've also set some more beetroot today as well my leeks are doing well absolutely lovely and my spinach and chard that I set a few weeks ago is looking very nice as well so nice that other things are nibbling at them but never mind I mean I can start picking this now and eating it so but I'm not going to I'm going to leave it for a while and what have I got here these are my um, runner beans looking really good really lovely and the potatoes variety to zeros you know they've come up lovely so hopefully a few more months get some lovely tatties and here the onward pear tree growing in this container down here is growing lovely nice We've got a nice crop carrying a nice crop so there we go Remember that wallflower I set a few uh, weeks ago? <laughs> Come out beautiful. These are a great plant to grow, by the way. Gerberas or gerberas, whatever you want to call them. Looking lovely. And the rose. Putting loads of new little heads up. And uh, the 